Thanks for staying with us. Now, a connected world is a world that highlights the power of technology. For example, the Internet of Things, artificial intelligence, big data, cybersecurity, machine learning, blockchain, and other digital technology. The benefits of a connected world offers many advantages for business, including um, sharing resources, providing opportunities, and reducing travel, um, reducing travel, ultimately saving costs. Now, it's not likely that paper money will completely disappear at any time in the near future. It is true that electronic transfer uh, transactions have become more and more common over the last few decades, and there is no reason why this trend will not continue. So what then will be the future of paper money in the highly connected world? Mm -hmm. Now, please let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at Weishu Africa 1 with the hashtag Show, or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So I'm going to bring in our guest like in two minutes, but what do you think the future of uh, paper money would look like, you know, in this connected world? <laughs> Well, if we're going to go forward, really, I believe that the future of money is digital. Um, whether that's the cryptocurrency or in how we transact, mm -hmm. it, it, it is the future. I remember people saying that people, real money doesn't make noise. <laughs> you can't hear real money and you can't count real money. Mm -hmm. You get real money is e-money, is electronic money. Mm. So I, I think that that's the future. But I'm also excited about this discussion in getting to look at the hazards, our fears, and address a lot of issues that we'll be discussing today. Absolutely. Tammy, how about you? What do you think the future of money would be looking like? Tammy, are you there? Did we lose Tammy again? <laughs> Probably. Very tricky network. <laughs> All right. Owen is here, or DI is, uh, has been the country manager at Luno Nigeria for over three years before her role at the company. She previously worked for Zenith Bank as a mobile payment lead for eight years and holds a degree in computer engineering and master's of science in mobile computing. Um, that's the distinction. Yes, from the University of um, Hertfordshire. And she's joined us live from Abidjan as we take this conversation further. Thank you so much, Owen, for joining us. Thank you very much. All right, Owen, can you hear me? Yes, please. All right, so thank you so much for joining us, Owen. All right, so um, for those that do not understand what digital currency is, mm -hmm. maybe we should just start from the basics. What do you think, um, you know, in the layman's term, for people that are wondering, oh, they are saying digital currency is the future, what is what exactly is digital currency? Okay, so um, thank you for this question. Before I start talking about digital currency, let me take you back to evolution. Okay. So I'm not going to bore you too many. But then again, I think um, evolution is a natural process, right? Mm -hmm. Technology has constantly evolved. I mean, if you remember back then, we used mailbox to send emails from post office to landline. So that is how technology has gradually evolved. Um, natural evolution and then for the internet the way people use money has gradually evolved too so um of course uh, the internet has made world a global village right so let me break it down i mean i was going through you talked about blockchain um so think about the internet the internet as it is right now allows you to send information from one end to another mm -hmm. that is why you can from the comfort of your send an email and then someone in china receives it within seconds so think about the internet like the blockchain the blockchain is an application that allows you not just to send information, but to record that information such that everybody has access to their information. So like the way you have the email, the Yahoo mail, writing on the internet application, that's where you have cryptocurrency. Cryptocurrency is just an application that writes on the blockchain technology, right? It allows you to not just send information, record information. I mean, there are lots of applications on blockchain. People have thought about the blockchain just because of the unique characteristics of the blockchain that you can send information and it's saved such that you have access. You see all those computers, I'm looking at your screen right now. Mm -hmm. They're like nodes on the network. They allow you to record the information such that anybody can actually see this information. So um, for cryptocurrencies, there are over 3,000 cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin, like we all know, is the most common cryptocurrency. In fact, it was the first ever that was invented. And the whole idea behind it was to help facilitate payment from one end to another, regardless of your country. You understand? So the way you can just send an email from China to Nigeria, that's where you can actually send Bitcoin from one end to another. I hope that is quite illustrative. And well, it is. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, we, we, we've talked about cryptocurrencies um, in recent times, especially when CBN 
did the banning and all of that. So we just we know a bit about it, but you know, for the for the benefit of those that do not understand what um, cryptocurrencies are, you know, because a lot of people are still very very skeptical. And when you say over three thousand, I read somewhere they said over five thousand um, uh, cryptocurrencies. I am wondering, is this not too much? You know, would this not be too? Um, is it polarized and would be the word that I would use, you know? So having, yes, it's just too many. You know, like with the fiat currency, you know that, okay, there's there's pounds, there's this, there's that. But with cryptocurrency, the numbers, is this not enough um, reason to raise alarm? Because a lot of people are still very skeptical about this currency that everybody is saying that is the future of money. So I, I think because of blockchain technology and unique characteristics, a lot of people have decided to build application on that. Mm -hmm. However, for Luno, um, we know that there are over 3,000 cryptocurrencies that have decided, you know what, it's important that you, whatever you're going to sign up on your platform, you make it simple because it's a new technology, in fact, somehow complex. So uh, that's the reason why um, we just don't have all the cryptocurrencies listed on our platform. We need to understand the use case of that cryptocurrency. For instance, Bitcoin is used to facilitate P2P transfers. Mm. Ethereum can be used for smart contracts. You have the Ripple and you have the Litecoin. So yeah, I mean, so it's something that a lot of exchanges and people are thinking about, but they decide to list all these exchanges and um, cryptocurrencies. Yes, you are correct. There are a lot of cryptocurrencies, but that's blockchain technology. My dear, it's it's a global village. There's massive adoption as it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have seen... Um the CBN's directive on cryptocurrency account holders. And then we've heard of countries, even like India, binding, ba banning cryptocurrencies. What do you think is the fear you know, that governments and C uh, central banks have about cryptocurrency? So first thing, I believe that for the CBN, anything that seems to be threatening the sovereignty of the currency, the fiat, like the Naira, is something that they should obviously question. Um, so I, I think for them, they, I mean, from the press release and statements they've made, it's something that they're trying to understand. Um, I'm hopeful. I believe that they will come around and come up with a regulation for cryptocurrencies. So for now, I think their approach is basically to ensure that um, it's more or less controlled. That's the most important thing, because I mean, with cryptocurrency, with the use case technology, a lot of things can go wrong. So that's the reason why they have decided to take that approach. Hopefully the ban is not forever. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, so I was just going to ask that, you know, what's the difference between cryptocurrency and forex trading? Because a lot of people seem to, are they the same thing? Are they different? What is it really? What's the difference between cryptocurrency and forex trading? I think one thing you should notice is that cryptocurrency has its various use cases. Okay. So when you hear forex trading, people just say, okay, trading forex and the action of value. Well, you, cryptocurrency is used as a store of value. It's used as a means of payment. And because of it's um, not so, I mean, because of the volatility, people, some people use it as a trading, I mean, like Forex for trading. So they buy when it's low and sell when it's high. So it's not just, so I think you need to, it's important that you take into account the fact that it's not just for trading, it has various use cases for investment, for speculation, for holding, and for trading and making micro payments. All right, so we have Temi now. I think she's joined us. Temi, are you there? Hi, Uwa. Yes, I can hear you now. All right, fantastic. Okay, so go ahead, please. Okay, so I need to say part of the broadcast, but I'm not sure if she had mentioned, you know, some of the misconceptions about crypto. As she, if she has, I'll just move on to another question. No, go ahead. Ask. I don't think we've, we've, we've yeah, gotten there. Okay, description. all right, great. So you know that usually there's this thing about when somebody reaches out to you, perhaps on social media, and in their bio, you see the person using Bitcoin, Forex, crypto, and it's already like a red flag because, you know, usually people reach out, send spams and things like that to your emails using these words. And it's like, as I know, oh, this is what the scammers say. So, are there other misconceptions? I mean, your organization deals in this, right? Do you get this, a lot of these? Like, people think, ah, are you a scammer? You know, is it one of the thoughts that people convey in words and just generally what are some of the misconceptions about cryptocurrency thank you very much i think the first thing here is um cryptocurrency sometimes can be a very complex technology that is why you know what we do is basically focus on education uh -huh. we understand that the new technology is important we educate our customers if you want to deal with cryptocurrency you need to do your research and with, with technology comes people of the underworld 
they believe that people are desperate enough, vulnerable. They try to take advantage. That's why you see someone come up, um, reach out to you on Instagram and put on his bio, fire, forex trading or crypto trader. It's important that you do not just fall for such scams, right? So it's, it's, it's expected. And then there's one thing I need to say. I know most of my colleagues do not like me saying this. The reason why people still um, think about cryptocurrency and scam is because of MMM, right? I mean, back when MMM was broke, MMM gave people well, people the options to cash out with cryptocurrency. Mm. So that with that, a lot of, I mean, then when MMM shut down, people just started saying, oh, crypto is MMM. I mean, not even think of the fact that MMM actually gave people the option to cash out with fiat. Like we are Naira, mm -hmm. you might as well say Naira is also a scam. So, so that's why we try to educate customers that it's not MMM. I mean, before anybody comes, you, nobody will come and say, let me trade for you because I promise you, you use returns. No, we do not expect you to use your life savings to trade in cryptocurrency because it's a new technology. We expect you to have to do a lot of education. Luno, for instance, we are focused on education. We are trying to empower the youths, not just youths, everybody, because there's going to be a massive adoption. And what we've seen in Nigeria is that it's, it's, it's crazy, excuse my word, but the adoption rate in Nigeria is pretty big. Even from Google Trends, you can see that Nigeria is like the second biggest market when it comes to search for cryptocurrency. So it's important that we focus on education and just to ensure that anybody coming into the space is coming from an informed perspective. So in focusing on education, um, Owen, what exactly would cryptocurrency do? You know, what are the uses of cryptocurrencies? Because a lot of people just hear cryptocurrencies, cryptocurrency, in their mind is that I'm making money, but people do not know how broad, you know, cryptocurrencies can actually, in terms of transactions. So maybe you should help us, you know, explain what exactly would the cryptocurrency you know do for you like i mentioned uh, there are various use cases um in what we've seen in nigeria is a lot of people are using it for micro payments mm. um for remittances um and then a lot of people are also using it for um as a store of value you understand and because of the massive adoption i think when it comes to i mean institutional investors are already coming to play in the space you have the likes of PayPal, thinking of listing cryptocurrency, MasterCard. So I think with that, um, it, it gives people the option for payments, right? That's why we've seen um, a lot of adoption, and that's kind of use case for cryptocurrency. Mm. Absolutely. You, you were coming? Okay, so I was going to ask, um, again, sorry, I'll just refer to the CBN's directive. So given that this is in place, and I want to, or I'm interested in starting to you know, buy into cryptocurrency, how do I even start? And what confidence do I have, you know, pending when, you know, the CBN comes around and just as you've said, probably learn more about it to be able to... Do you even see the, the, the unbanning happening anytime soon? I don't know. That's why I say <laughs> <laughs> pending the time when they get to understand it and maybe build structures around it, I, I hope. So w w what's the future here in Nigeria? You've already mentioned how, you know, we are up there when it comes to the interest in cryptocurrency and also, you know, the things that we do. So... How? How do I start? What's the confidence that I have that if I really get into it, I, I will see my money? <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's the reason why we have always um, believed in regulation, because like you rightly mentioned, regulation will give people comfort to go into cryptocurrency. However, what we've noticed is that since um, the ban, a lot of people have sort of developed interest. Um, I don't know for what mm. reasons. That's why it's important that regulators come up with something Right, because the truth is that, like I mentioned, with new technology, people are coming up with various ways to take advantage of vulnerable and desperate people. So for now, it's something that you can read about. Yeah, I mean, I mean, with the ban, this has sort of forced us as Luna as a company to pause our deposits and withdrawals. So um, we're just trying to see how we can work alongside with regulators to see how we can resolve it as quickly as possible and go back to business. I I'm happy you said that because when <laughs> the flyer for this show came up. Everybody is, how can I get payment? How can I get payment? We've been getting a lot of messages on, you know, payment. Would you like to explain to your, to your, I mean, because I'm sure they are watching the people that sent in those messages about, you know, they were complaining about more about payments and payments and payments. And they said a lot of crypto terminologies that I, I have no clue about, you know. So do you mind explaining, you know, what the real situation and I mean, probably, um, um, calm their expectations down, you know, so that they, they, they just patiently wait for when these will be resolved. Okay, so let me try here. I, I think the CBN, what they're trying to do is basically understand, um, they're, they're concerned about protecting the citizens. So that's why they decided to take that approach, um, ban banks from dealing with anything crypto. And this has sort 
affected and so that we have stopped deposits and withdrawals and we're posting and waiting to for the CBN to come around for there to be a, like an engagement. So um, yeah, customers, for the customers, you want me to give them reassurance, their money is safe for them. Yeah, because um, somebody says, are we ever going to withdraw through <laughs> Luno? That's, I mean, there are many comments, so many comments. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, of course. I mean, of course, the CBN understands the implication and the impact it's having on customers and citizens, not just customers. So it's something that they will definitely have to enable eventually just so that um, customers get their monies back. Okay, so how complicated is doing cryptocurrency? Because I think when people just see crypto, and especially when they start to show that blockchain matter, it's headache. You know, for somebody that doesn't know any jack about technology and all of that, once you see that, you just automatically, but I hear that is the easiest thing, you know, to do. So for somebody that is thinking, okay, you know what, I want to start to trade in this business quietly because I know that this is the future of money. You know, how easy is it, you know, because people just f see cryptocurrency and see like it, it's very complicated. So, sorry, well, that... can I just layer my question because I think they're related <laughs> yeah. to just answer it at once. And so we hear that the amount for one Bitcoin, for example, fifty-eight thousand dollars. Exactly. So <laughs> when you're going to buy, does it mean that uh, you are going to buy one, or do you buy it in fractions? You know, how do you do that? So that's why I, I just wanted to layer that because that's not they're closely problem. related to okay. what's happening. So first thing first, it's not as complicated as it sounds. Just as sometimes um, the terminology sounds like crypto, cryptography, hashtag. So that's why we try to break it down. It's simple as long as you understand it. And that's why we're also focused on education. education. And I also thank God for the likes of Google, which is a very, very useful tool <laughs> that can break Bitcoin down to the lowest, I mean, to a layman. And then people, people also relate Bitcoin to, they also call it digital gold. You know, the way gold is divisible. I mean, look at my piece of gold. It's not, I mean, it's just a fraction of it. However, it's worth some amount. That's the good thing about Bitcoin, the cryptocurrency, it's mm -hmm. divisible. So you hear one Bitcoin is $58,000. Of course, you cannot, you don't, I mean, not a lot of us can afford that. But the good thing is that like you asked, you can buy a fraction. Right? You can start with as little as 10,000 naira. You can start with as little as 5,000 naira. You can have a fraction of the Bitcoin. Okay. All right. So we'll just take a very short break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back.